it appears that white nationalists are beginning to impersonate members of Antifa. Uh, so now one recent case of that happening uh, actually happened on Twitter, which means, of course, Twitter uh, had caught them. And, and I'm actually surprised that Twitter is starting to really crack down on this stuff because I really didn't expect them to do that. Now, that's opposed to, of course, Mark Zuckerberg, who refuses to do, basically do anything uh, about online hatred. So now a Twitter account claiming to belong to a national Antifa organization turns out has been found linked to a white nationalist group. You know why? You know how we know? Well, one giveaway is because there is no national Antifa organization. They're, they're not a national group. Or I'm, I'm sorry, they're not like a tight-knit group. They don't have a national organization. Uh, and so now according to a Twitter spokesperson, the account which had to handle at Antifa US had been calling for violence. And so that's why they were flagged by Twitter in the first place. So here's, here's what they tweet, and you've probably seen this going around Facebook, right? Uh, because the virality has spread around the internet. They said, tonight's the night, comrades. Tonight we say F the city, and we move into the residential areas, the white hoods, and we take what's ours. Now that, of course, very ominous, right? Oh, my gosh. Oh, no, they're, they're, they're coming into the white areas. Oh, no, we got to do something, right? Well, that's exactly what you would say if you wanted to make sure that Black Lives Matter and Antifa have no white allies. That's what you would do. Now, the thing is, again, Antifa is not a it's not a cohesive group. It's anybody who's an anti-fascist. It's not an organization at all. Uh, and so their entire purpose is just people who are fed up with seeing fascists marked through the streets. Right. And, and they will confront them with violence. Yes. And they will confront them with milkshakes. That's what they'll do. Now, if you were to, you know, if you were to take that tweet at face value, which I would urge you not to right, and not read into it. So say maybe you're like a, you know, not even a right wing. Somebody who's just not plugged into news and so doesn't really know a lot about the situation. You'll see something like that. And you say, oh, my gosh, it's those Antifa I keep uh, hearing about from Donald Trump, you know, from, from President Trump. Uh, I hear they're dangerous. Oh, my gosh, they're, they're just they're threatening to come into the white neighborhoods now. Oh, no, that's, that's not good. <laughs> but again, if, if you're unaware, here's a, the reality that would be uncharacteristic of what we've seen from Antifa, even Black Thought, right? Which, yes, they have done some property destruction. Uh, and they have went after the people who are basically neo-Nazis, right? That's what they do. They go after the neo-Nazis. Uh, and so now the group that was actually behind this account was found to be uh, a white nationalist, group, uh, white nationalist group called Identity Evropa. So, yeah. Now, Twitter removed that account as they said that it violated the company's platform's manipulation and spam policy, specifically the creation of fake accounts. So understand that this is just part of what they're trying to do. They're trying to spread fear and misinformation on social media. And of course, like President Trump, they're targeting Antifa, right? Uh, and because they're a really good boogeyman for the right wing. They just really are. Uh, the, the real danger, however, of course, is the far right. People, yes, again, People in Antifa do use violence. Understand, right? I'm not saying that they're nonviolent. No, they're the they're the opposite of nonviolent. They are violent. They go and they punch Nazis. That's what they do, and they're they're proud of that fact, right? But the far right has groups that have went far beyond that. They also use violence, but oftentimes it's deadly violence. They've killed people. I can't, well, I, what's, the, what's the Antifa body count at so far? Oh, right. Just nothing. Zero. No, uh, they've killed no people. They don't do that. But these right-wing groups, they do do that. They do kill people. 
Uh, and yet one is being considered to be a terror group by the president, while the other one seems to enjoy allies in the White House, or at least friends, or at least, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're good people on both sides. Think about that for a second. Now, there's more. There are reports of white nationalist groups using the protests to unsurprisingly incite racial tensions in the country. Okay. According to the Southern Poverty Law Center, white nationalists, white supremacists, right-wing militias, gun rights extremists, Proud Boys, and other far-right extremists are using the Floyd protests to foment confusion, animosity against legitimate demonstrators, and ultimately civil war. And they have adopted a code word for this, boogaloo. That is a reference for a race war. So understand what this is about. They call themselves the Boogaloo Boys. Uh, and they have been infiltrating recent protests over George Floyd, uh, the killing of George Floyd, taking advantage of crowds and emotionally charged atmosphere to instigate chaos and disruption in an attempt to discredit the Black Lives Matter movement and in order to further their goal of a race-based civil war. So let me give you some of the different reports about the Boogaloo Boys. Again, this is from the Southern Poverty Law Center. Boogaloo Boys, individuals associated with the online community characterized by calls for civil strife and ownership of firearms, and tactical gear. By, by the way, ownership of firearms is not a bad thing. Uh, and so let me just clear that up. Uh, but they have called for using them against fellow Americans, which is bad, right? Uh, civil strife <clears throat> and an armed revolution online. And they've been doing so at public rallies for months. NPR reports on this, that their fringe movements, including right-wing militias and patriot groups, have begun using the word boogaloo on social media as a thinly veiled code for a race-based or civil war. The Anti-Defamation League is reporting that a variety of extremists and fringe movements and subcultures adopted the word boogaloo as shorthand for a future civil war, from militia groups to white supremacists, agreements, uh, extremists on a range of online platforms talk about and even sometimes anticipate the boogaloo. So understand, this is dangerous stuff. Totally dangerous stuff. In fact, according to NBC, uh, members of the Boogaloo movement, a loosely net online collective of firearm enthusiasts, were seen at protests in states including Minnesota and Texas and in Philadelphia. In private Facebook groups and chat rooms, several of which have tens of thousands of members, members have called for looting police precincts and burning down government buildings. Now, that doesn't mean that they're responsible for the entirety of the destruction that we have seen uh, of property during these protests. No, I'm sure that there were protesters out there that were smashing things too. Like, understand, right? It's not a deflection. It's not to say, oh, no, a, it's a, it's a, they're all, you know, uh, perfectly, perfect, you know, and, and don't cause any sort of destruction. No, no, no. What I'm saying is that there are these people as well, right? There is a concerted effort among people on the right to make as many of the protests, which have been mostly peaceful, at, or at least started that way, into violent, destructive protests in order to further their own political goals and not to further justice. And so it's always good to watch out for fake accounts, to watch out for provocateurs. People, for example, look, I've been, I've been, uh, here, uh, you know, hearing news accounts of pallets of bricks just appearing, right, before protests. Like, that's, come on, man. <laughs> like, obvious bait is obvious, right? And so you got to watch out for those things and those people who are going to try to weaponize your protests. And more importantly, make sure to weaponize the police against you. Hey, guys, hopefully you enjoyed that free video. Now I'm going to have to ask you a favor. Between the uh, demonetization and the YouTube algorithm messing around with view counts, etc., we're having a hard time adjusting to the new YouTube reality, which is where you guys come in. See, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TYTNation, set up to help us rely on the, you guys, the viewers, instead of big corporate ads. Look. You know the show. You know how I'm not in favor of big corporations anyway. So help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron. Patreon.com slash TYT Nation. That goes a long way to help us keep the lights on. And you guys will know that you're supporting independent.
progressive media.